Lulu is one of a, a little group of pieces, if you like, which tackles um, the idea of a, a kind of free spirit, somebody who is outside the boundaries of society and who provokes, in fact, in society, if you like, the animal nature that lurks beneath the civilised surface. So in a way, that's what our take is on Lulu. That Lulu is a kind of erotic force. I mean, the Greeks would have called her a goddess, really, uh, in the sense that she is a kind of force whose eroticism and power is more important than who her mother was or what street she lives in. And in fact, you don't even know what her name is or who her mother and father were or where she came from. She just came out of the earth, spread mayhem and destruction amongst all the kind of men around who are driven, and women, uh, who are driven crazy by her and who eventually have to wreak their vengeance on her um, as they do on the other figures like that, Don Giovanni or Carmen or indeed the cunning little vixen for that matter. Um, and so the piece is a kind of revenge piece. It's a piece that shows her rise and exactly at the middle of the piece, after she shot her third husband or victim, or lover, um, it starts to go downhill and indeed the music goes into reverse and, and we chart her downfall to the point at which her main lover and um, supporter, really, Dr. Schoen, uh, who she's murdered, so to speak, at this high point, comes back as Jack the Ripper and murders her in London. It's a piece in, set very clearly in the 20s, and it's sort of set amongst high life in the 20s up to the last scene, which is a kind of very low life scene, actually. Um, so there is an element of a kind of glamorous social comedy about it. If you were to think of Don Giovanni taking place in, in Berlin in 1930, um, you know, that would be a, a good idea of what one aspect of Lulu is. So it, it has glamour, it has style, it has, uh, you know, sort of high life, uh, fun and games. And it also has an element of comedy about it, even of farce. And that there are all these strange characters that are drawn from circus and burlesque and cabaret. There's an athlete, there's a, a schoolboy who is infatuated with her. There, uh, there is a, a woman, the Countess Geschwitz, who is one of her lovers. Um, so all these kind of exaggerated figures um, populate the piece. So it has an element of comedy and of humour about it. It also has a kind of surreal element about it where it becomes at certain moments so absurd um, that, that it, it goes over into a kind of clowning or, or circus comedy. And indeed circus is an interesting word to use. And we've sort of set it in a way in some, something that is kind of cross between a circus and a menagerie. So we talked about animals um, and indeed the whole piece begins with the animal tamer actually relating the main characters in the opera to specific animals. And, and Lulu is a kind of snake and the Dr. Schoen is a tiger and the, the Marquis is a crocodile. And, and so, you know, you have this rather wonderful way in which you sense that Lulu draws the innate savagery out of a supposedly civilised society. Uh, and so there is this animal element which is both a kind of uh, glamorous or, 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 or fantastical element in the story, but also a dark element in the story, because in the end they're, they become predators, and in the end they kind of gather around to hunt Lulu to death. Well, the immediate next step, as always after you've presented a model, is probably the least attractive <laughs> which is that there's bound to be a certain amount of blood on the floor when it comes to actually figuring out what it all costs. So we were aware, um, as we presented the model, I mean, we knew already that, that we were, I don't know, 30 to 40,000 pounds over. Uh, and so the first thing we did is to sit around here for an hour and um, wipe the smile off everybody's face and, and find out how we were going to chop down what would be our ideal vision of the, of the 
of the design to something that we know that we can actually pay for. And I think, you know, tribute to everybody's collaboration and, and cooperativeness, I think we've got pretty close to achieving that and we will achieve it um, in the budget that we've set, which is, you know, which is important. And then there's the, you know, hugely detailed work of analysing the, the design and, and drawing it up technically and figuring out exactly which kind of material we were using for that piece of scenery or which for that particular costume. I mean, there are some very demanding animal masks to be made and finding out who and where and how and how much they're going to cost is... A, is, a, is so there's a lot of very detailed, um, you know, dog work to be done uh, by costume and by technical and by the lighting departments and so on to figure out how best to achieve this and how to take all this complicated stuff out on tour.